Now, wait a minute. Before you think you can never raise your own queens, I want you to think again. I'm here to tell you, I've done it for years. It's easy. It's not hard. It's not complicated. It's too difficult to try to order a queen. It's too difficult trying to wait for the queen to arrive and time it out just right from the queen that you bought from states away. So much more easier for you as a beekeeper to raise your own queen, take control of the timing. When you need a queen, you need it now. And so we're at the mercy of queen producers finally producing a queen and shipping it to us and hoping it survives shipping. You can take control of this. It will transform beekeeping for you when you learn the simple, simple art of raising your own queen. Quite honestly, I wonder if some people don't try to make it sound complicated so that they can sell more to you. I don't know. I just think that I want to help you learn to raise your own queens. Let's get started. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. I'm EAS Certified Master Beekeeper David Burns. For those of you that are first time dropping in, welcome to my channel. And for those of you that are loyal subscribers, Hey, how you doing? Nice to have you back. Today we're going to answer some questions. I have been doing a series on queen rearing and I'm going to do that for the next probably few weeks because it's so much material that's so fun to get into. Now before I get into this, let me tell you I have a free book that you can download. It's a PDF file. Dr. John Zavishlock and I wrote this book several years ago on how to raise quality queens. It's not a real big book, but it just gets right down to the basic facts, you know, just jump in there and we just made it simple to follow. I'm gonna have 100 copies of these available in a few weeks at Hive Life Conference at Sereville, 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 Sevierville, somewhere in Tennessee, <laughs> Hive Life. And um, John and I will autograph those for you if both of us seem to be at the same place at the same time, we can get those books autographed for you. But pick one of those up. We're selling the hard copies over there at Hive Life. Again, we're limited to 100 copies. That's about all we can pack and load over there. But anyway, this book you can download if you don't want to buy it. You can just download it. I'll leave a link in the description below. And it will walk you through how to raise quality queens. I also have a queen rearing class online that you can purchase. It's a queen rearing online beekeeping course. Many of you have purchased it, said you love it. It will walk you through hands-on with me showing you how to raise queens. But I'm gonna give you a good education on queen rearing in the next few weeks here on my channel. Today I wanna to answer three questions that commenters, viewers like yourself have left in my comment section because I think it's really important to get into because these questions are fundamental. But before I do, some of you may have not heard my story, so let me just tell you my story real quick, how I got started in queen rearing. I was wanting to make a living on uh, making honey. I thought if I had enough hives, I could make enough honey and make a living. Well, boy, that didn't work out very good. <laughs> I mean, I had a lot of hives at the time, but it takes a lot of work. And honey wasn't selling for much. It was like a buck 50 at the time, a pound, you know? And so it wasn't making enough to, for me to raise my family. So I actually was at a conference and I heard Joe Ladshaw uh, present queen rearing. And he was talking about how he raises breeder queens. And he was a really nice guy. So I got a hold of him, either email or I called him up. I said, hey, Joe, can I bring my couple of my kids over that are interested in raising queens? And, and can, would you teach us how to raise queens? I will pay you to teach us all day long. Whatever you want to tell me it cost, I'll pay it. Because I knew I could make money raising queens. Guess what? He invited me and two of my children over, who were teenagers at the time, and spent the day showing us how to raise queens. Priceless. He wouldn't take a penny for it. It was so nice of Joe to do that. And so I came home and started raising queens with my, a couple of my kids. My daughter, Curry really got into it. She was a very good grafter and she just took off and started helping us so much raising queens. And I soon learned that I could make more money raising queens than I could selling honey. Plus, I needed queens. I'm making nucleus, I'm selling five frame nukes to people. I'm expanding my own operation. I was buying queens and paying $70, $80 by the time I paid shipping. It was breaking my bank. 
And I thought, I need to find out how to raise my own queens just to save money and to give me the flexibility of having queens at the right time when I need them to make a split or to add more colonies. Sometimes you catch a swarm and you think, oh good, I got a swarm. And two weeks later, the queen's not in there. And wow, they're not raising one. Now what are you gonna do? If you're raising queens and you have some queens banked, ready to go, they're an armed force ready to jump in there and fight your battles when, you're go, when you go queenless. Having these queens banked at your disposal, whether you want to sell any or not, if you're a beekeeper, you know how easy it is to lose queens. Quite honestly, it's challenging, isn't it, to keep a hive queen right. Queen right means you've got a good laying queen in there. Here's what happens. A lot of you probably have experienced this. Leave a comment below if this has happened to you. You have a nice hive, but all at once the queen has a poor laying pattern. You look at the capped over pupae, it's spotty. Well, what are you gonna do? You can't find a queen. Maybe you've called around, nobody has one. It's gonna be a month before they can ship you one. You need it now. That spotty brood is getting worse. Without the proper brood in that hive, they don't have a good future. And you know, the one video that I made a couple of videos ago about explaining a brood gap how devastating it is to a hive. If you haven't seen that video, drop back a couple of videos and watch that one. Because when you have a brood break from a failing queen, it is bad. And it can make the whole colony just eventually perish. So you need to have an eye on the queen and her productivity at all times and get ready to replace that queen when she starts failing. It's okay to replace the queen the minute she stops producing good quality brood. You just got to replace her. And so I was really inspired to start raising my own queens. So that gave me more control over keeping high quality queens in all of my hives. That allowed me to have more honey, to make more nucleuses to sell. How does it make more honey? Well, if you have a good laying queen, she's laying a workforce of foragers gathering up nectar. You have a poor failing queen, not much brood, not much foragers. They don't make much honey. People, come on, this is so cool. I'm here to inspire you to raise your own queens. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, oh, I can't do it. My hands are too shaky. My eyes are too weak. I just don't know what I'm doing. Hey, don't wait to become perfect before you start. I didn't. I jumped in there and I said, I'm going to raise queens. And what was my first month or two like? It wasn't good. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> but I just stayed in there. I stayed in the game and kept experimenting. Where am I failing? Why, why am I not able to do this the way I want to? Oh, I see, I need to change this, I need to change that. I just sat, self-taught myself how to raise good quality queens over and over again, failing and then trying to make it right. Like Thomas Edison, I think it took him 1200 experiments to finally get something that worked in the light bulb. He didn't give up. I think he even burnt the whole building down once trying to, but you know, he just stayed in the game. That's what I want you to do. Some of you are thinking, oh, queen rearing is just for, you know, entomologists that are specialists in their field. No, it's not. I've trained a lot of entomologists how to keep bees. <laughs> Come on. Um, you can be a scientist and really sharp in biology and still not know how to raise queens, but you can be someone who is a citizen scientist. Your own backyard, you can start raising high quality queens that will just power up your beekeeping side hustle. Woo, come on, I'm excited. If you've tried queen rearing in the past and failed, I get it. I had, I, I failed too. I started with what was called a NICOT kit and it came with all these special little things where I didn't have to graft, but I could just put all these things in the hive, raise my own queens that way. I, I couldn't do it. I, I just couldn't. It was not going to work for me. It failed miserably until I got in there and learned how to do my own grafting of my one day old larvae into these queen cups that I showed you in a previous video, how to make these queen cups. These queen cups go into hives that they make into queen cells. Hey, I really started succeeding and it wasn't that hard. I'm nobody special. I don't have any special skills uh, as far as queen rearing up to the point where I just jumped in and figured it out. And, I, and so you can save yourself so many time consuming mistakes because I'm gonna guide you through it. You don't have to just flounder like I did 
uh, day after day failing until you figure it out. I've already, hey, I'm like one beggar telling the other beggar where the water is. I found the water <laughs> and I'm not holding back. I'm just going to let you know what it is. But I want to answer three of these questions and let's get started on it. First question I want to answer is from George. George says, is there a video on how to bank queens? I don't know how to save them from when I need them. That's a good question, George, because so many of us wonder if I make a bunch of queens, I can't necessarily sell them all at one time. And so what do I do? Where do I hold them? Well, a couple of things that I do in holding my queens that I'm going to sell or use myself is that I can hold them in a queen bank. One of the ways that I do it is with this frame. Now, I made this frame myself. I don't know if anybody else makes these. I didn't get an idea for this off of anything other than how do I solve a problem? And that's what is unique, I think, to most beekeepers that succeed is they don't try to figure things out where they can buy something out of a catalog or, you know, who has the best this or that. Instead, they say, what do I need? What can I solve with something that I need? So I needed a way to hold these queen cages. So once my queens return from their mating flights and they start laying a good brood pattern, solid brood, I will take them out of their mating nooks and I will put them in these California cages, California mini cages. And I put a little candy, just, you know, I'll show you how to make candy in a future video, queen candy, but you can use a marshmallow, but a little bit of candy right in the hole right there. And then I would just, I built this frame. It was beautiful when I first made it years ago, but now it's aged and well used like me. <laughs> and I would just push these in there. I made this just the right spacing and I just played around with it until there was tension that would, I could slide these in with a little tension, but they would stay right here. And then that allowed me actually to bank my queens right here like this, and they would sit in cages like this. I learned that if I kept the cages kind of like in a brood nest circle like this, they're well taken care of by the bees. Once I put all these mated queens that had already been laying for a couple of weeks in these cages, then I could take this banking frame and I would take a regular hive that has two deeps on it and I would put a queen excluder between the two deeps holding the queen down in the lower deep and then I would put these queens, mated queens, in the top deep in the center. What would happen is it works every time the bees start caring for these mated queens. The queens start uh, in here wanting food. They start asking for food and the, all the bees in this large hive start feeding through this screen. And so these would be held. I could hold these a long time, weeks upon weeks. I could hold them. Somebody dropped by wants to buy one. I can go out and pull one out. Now you can't bank virgin queens. You don't want to do that. Virgin queens won't go out on, on a mating flight if you hold them more than 21 days. They'll never go out on a mating flight. They have to go mate and then come back. Let them lay for a couple of three weeks before you bank them. They need, a, they need to be able to produce a lot of eggs, get into the rhythm, start laying well. And at that point, you can grab and bank them. Now, you don't want to bank them. You know, don't, don't think you want to bank them forever. Uh, try to bank them as minimally as possible. Like if you only bank them for three days, five days, a week, I just don't want to bank them very long. And that way I want them to go right back to work laying eggs. Now you can bank them longer. I've experimented with it. The longest queen that I ever banked and put her in a hive and she started laying beautifully was uh, four weeks and one day. She stayed banked four weeks and one day. And once I let her out, uh, she did beautifully laying that, that year but that it may not always work that way. So don't keep them banked forever, but that's one way you can bank them. Another way that you can bank your queens is to simply put them in a five frame nucleus. And that way the queen can keep laying. Now she's not banked in a cage. She has a freedom to just roam around in this five frame nucleus, easy to build. I'll show you in a future video how I make these five frame nucleus out of plywood and it really works great. But once you drop your mated queen in there, or if you're using it as a mating nook, just when she flies back to that five frame mating nook, let her lay, let her stay in there. Don't need to take her out until you need her. How many mating nooks can you have? One, two, five, 500, depends on how many you wanna manage. 
But once you have mating nooks, they can hold your queen. They're just a tiny little hive. Now you might say, well, what if that mating nook swarms? Who cares? They'll make a queen and then you still have a queen, right? If you don't want to fool with it, you just want to hold like 25 mating nooks and you don't want to manage them, they will swarm maybe. You don't want to do swarm management, let them swarm, let them raise another queen. Uh, I have found though that I can manipulate my mating nooks very easily. So if I have five frames in there, once they draw the five frames out, I pull out two frames and move them to a, a new mating nook with a queen cell and let them start. That's how I continue to expand my mating nooks. I just let this one get full, pull a couple of frames out, let that one go full, pull more out. It doesn't take any time at all. Bees build up really fast in little uh, boxes, little mating nooks like that. So I always like to use deep frames deep full size frames. I don't like to use small ones that are mismatched. If I keep everything the same size, I've always got a frame available. So whether it's my deep high bodies, my mating nooks, uh, my banking frames or whatever, deep, nine inches, nine and an eighth uh, long. So two ways to bank your queens, George, is to put them in a queen bank, like I just explained, or put them in nucleuses or mating nooks, let them sit out there and lay eggs until you need them. Now I wanna answer another, two more questions. Listen up, these are important. I know that if some of my uh, YouTube viewers are asking these questions that most of you are asking these. So I'm answering this on behalf of one person, but all of you. Kim asks, what happens if you replace the queen and it turns out there's a lame queen in there you couldn't find? Kim, I think you have a great question. Here's what's gonna happen if you fail to remove your old queen. If you don't move, remove the old queen, her pheromones are kind of in or a part of the whole colony. So all the bees are transmitting, transferring her queen mandibular pheromone around the hive. If you introduce a foreign queen, they don't accept her. They're like, nope, I don't recognize that pheromone, off with her head. So they'll never accept her. Even if their queen is failing, they won't accept your better queen because they have the pheromones of their mama. So you have to get rid of the old queen, wait 24 hours before you introduce a new queen. Always introduce a new queen, not directly, but in a queen cage. This one, a plastic one, uh, one with three holes, a Benton three hole queen cage, whatever. But you need to have candy, let them eat through the candy, have a slow introduction to a new queen but you have to get rid of the old one, wait 24 hours to introduce a new one. Always do it that way. Whether you're making you know, a replacement of a queen or whatever, you have to introduce her behind candy. So let me give you a few tips on what you can do to find your queen if you need to replace her, she's not laying well, or it's a mean colony. I sometimes have to do that with queen excluders. Let's say you have two deeps and a honey super. So you have 30 frames and you're looking all through those frames trying to find one bee, <laughs> the queen. Well, what I do is go out there and suit up, smoke them, drop a, a queen excluder between every box. It takes two of them, one between the two deeps, one between the deep and the super on top. So I got two queen excluders. Now I have three spaces, three boxes that are contained, or the queen is contained. She is in one of those three boxes. I do this in case I'm having a really hard time finding her, or she's real runny and I can't locate, she's just jumping between boxes. Now what I do in this situation, it aids you in identifying where the queen is. You start with your super. If you think she could be laying up there and you've already put in your two queen excluders, wait about two weeks. Go back in, look in that super. Do you see eggs? Do you see brood? If you don't see eggs, larvae, or any brood in there, she's not in that super. Set the super aside. Take the queen excluder off. Go into the top deep, because remember, you've had two queen excluders surrounding that top deep. In that top deep, do you see eggs, larvae, or brood? If you scan it real quick and see nothing, she's not in there, guess where she is? She might be in the bottom deep now, right? Now, whatever box she's in, to find her, you only have to look at 10 frames, and usually the three on the wall sides don't really contain brood, so that's six. That means you have four frames to look at. <laughs> Isn't that 
That's, you're just thinking, man, that's brilliant. Hey, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I'm telling you tips, guys. When you can't find your queen, isolate her with some queen excluders. And that way you minimize how many frames you have to look at. And she won't jump to the box of below you while you're looking. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know you're getting value in the comment sections below from these videos that I'm making. So, Kim, that's one way that you can isolate your queen is with queen excluders till you finally find her. Then you just got to pinch her, fire her, and wait 24 hours and introduce the queen of your choice. That's what you have to do. Please, all of you listen up closely. Don't introduce a queen hoping that your old queen is going to die off. No. The bees around her, her queen court, all the bees that have her pheromone will defend her till the end against all other queens that you throw in there. You're wasting your money. Now let's answer another question. Dave says, great information. I had a queen event last summer and ended up with a laying worker. I wanted to start queen rearing because it's so hard to get your hands on a queen when you need one. Can you please discuss queen rearing in limited space? Well, Dave, I think all of us have limited space. I mean, we don't own, most of us don't own 500 acres that we can just make a sea of hives across rolling hills as far as the eye can see. Most of us are limited to some degree. If you're not limited by space, you might be limited by sheer muscle and back muscles and workforce. <laughs> so, you know, space isn't so much the problem as how much time do you have to fool around with your hives and raising queens. But let's say, let's go pretty average. Let's say you're a beekeeper with a backyard. Now, how many queens can you raise in your backyard? It, let's say you have one hive. Let's make it as small as we can. And let's say that hive is two deeps with a honey super. That's all you have. And you're thinking, I saw David's video about raising queens. I'm kind of excited. He got me excited about this. Can I raise queens in this backyard with one hive? Yes, I want you to do it this way. I was gonna make a whole video about this. I'm gonna sneak this in there really fast. I want you to take this hive that you have and if you're pleased with how it's performing, I want you, I want you to raise queens from a successful hive, not a weak hive. But if you see good brood pattern, a lot of honey production, they're not dying from mites and diseases, hey, it's, it's a good hive to raise queens from. And all you need to do is find a uh, frame with eggs on it, and now you need to find a one-day-old larvae, graft it, and remember I showed you a few videos back how we made these queen cells with this special little thing I, my uh, father-in-law made for me, make these queen cups, and you can take these queen cups and put them on a frame like this and drop them into a five-frame nucleus. You can make your own. I'm gonna show you how you make your own. You can buy one, but that five frame nucleus is going to become your best friend. So now in your backyard, all you have is a hive and a five frame nucleus. Five frame nucleus, nine inches wide, you know, about 20 inches long. It's not a big footprint in your backyard. You have a big hive and one tiny little five frame nuke. So what you're going to do is you're going to build up that uh, five frame nucleus. I'm going to show you how to do this as a starter hive. Basically, you put young bees in there, six to 12 days old, brush bees off of open brood from your big hive, and then drop this in there after doing your grafting, and then you don't have to move it to a finishing hive. Let's just save time. And say so you want them just to raise queen, uh, two or three queens for you, or just one. Then you just drop it in there and leave it. They'll make a queen cell, they'll raise that queen, she'll go mate, she'll come back, and you've got a queen sitting in a five frame nucleus box in a small space. I, I'm going to show all of you how to do that. I'm going to, in the next few videos that I'm going to make, I'm going to show you how to start very simple with just one hive and one nucleus. I'm going to teach you how to raise queens. All of us are going to raise at least one queen. And, and, if, and if it's the wrong time of the year for you, you're watching this video in the winter, that's okay. You can uh, save it somewhere, watch it again, take notes or whatever, so that when spring gets here, you can do it. It's going to be so fun. So these are good questions. Limited space is not a problem. And especially starting learning how to raise queens, we're gonna take a very simple, gonna take the most simple way for you to learn to raise queens, and then we're gonna expand it in case some of you do wanna raise more for spring splits, uh, spring swarms that lose their queens, or maybe just the failing queens that happen to us all pretty regularly anymore. Or maybe you're wanting to expand where you can start making money selling queens. I'm here to help you. Gonna hold your hand. It's okay. You don't have to know everything. 
I don't care if you're a farmer, a banker, a lawyer, I don't care if you're a mechanic, an airplane pilot, a doctor, whatever your occupation is, but you wanna play with raising queens, high five, we're gonna to learn together. Now, I want you to watch this last video in case you have a lot of honey and you've never experimented with cooking with honey. Join me and Sherry in our last video, Christmas holiday cooking with our honey. I'll see you over there.